So starting off with the basic settings here, we've got some presets for a variety of different driving styles. So that gives you a nice little starting point there, which you can then fine tune all these adjustments to your personal preference. So if we click on drift, for example, you can see the maximum speed of the steering wheel increases to 100%. If we go back to GT, it should go a lot lower. And we can also save and import settings here as well. That just brings up a standard Windows dialog box to save a JSON file. So if you wanna set up profiles for different sims or different cars, you can do so. You can also send them to your mates to check out as well. Now, another thing you'll notice as well is we have a handy little tooltip icon next to each of these settings, which explains in plain English exactly what the setting does. So we'll run through those for you so you get a good sense of all the adjustments which we have available in the software. So starting off with maximum limit and steering angle, that's exactly the same adjustment that we saw just before on the homepage down here. But you'll notice now we also have a little toggle switch to switch between synchronous and asynchronous mode. So you'll notice maximum limit and steering angle are actually two different things which are usually combined but can be used separately. So the maximum limit determines the maximum amount that the wheel is able to physically turn before you hit that bump stop. But some games don't like you messing with the steering angle. Now the steering angle is the value that's actually outputted by the wheelbase as it's interpreted by the game. So you can imagine if the game is expecting say 900 degrees but we actually set the wheelbase to 540 degrees, what's gonna happen is the steering is gonna feel super, super sensitive because a small amount of movement here is gonna to relate to a large amount of movement inside the game. So what this allows us to do is create an offset here. So say for example, the game wants to see 900 degrees, so we'll type 900, but you actually want to feel that bump stop in the wheel at say 360 degrees, what we can do is we can create exactly that scenario. So now the game is gonna be happy because it's seeing the values that it wants to see to not make the steering overly sensitive, but we still get the benefit of that mechanical feeling bump stop from the motor at the level of degrees that we want it set to. So I don't know of too many sim titles these days that require this, but it is a good thing to see that they've included that. They've obviously, you know, they spent a lot of time thinking about some of the various different scenarios which might play out for various different people. But we're gonna set that back to synchronous for now. I'm gonna jump it back to 540 degrees. So road sensitivity here, it says the road sensitivity ranges from zero to 10. The greater the value, the stronger the road effect feel. The smaller the value, the softer the road feels. So that's gonna be communicating things like road textures, ripple strips, dirt and gravel, all those things. And we have a range here from zero to 10 with a default setting of nine. So game force feedback intensity, this acts like an amplifier or multiplier on top of the value that you set inside your game. So most games have an adjustment for force feedback strength within the game itself. And then this adds on top of that. So what you generally wanna do, this is what I recommend at least, set the game so you're getting as much output as possible without clipping. And then you can adjust your force feedback intensity here to you know kind of fine tune to what you like to feel through the wheel itself. So that's what that's aiming to do. And if we hover over the tooltip here, it says the integral force feedback or the total force feedback consists of game force feedback or the value coming out of the game plus the motor force feedback, which is the value that we're setting here. So maximum speed of the steering wheel. This one says the higher the value is, the faster the steering wheel returns to the wheel during travel. I assume that means to the center during travel. High return speed is more suitable for drifting while low reversing speed can make the steering more natural, more stable and more accurate. At the same time, low return speed can ensure the safety of racing drivers. So obviously if you're drifting, you want the wheel to very quickly react to what's going on with the wheels inside the game. Whereas for normal racing, generally you're dealing with smaller movements. So you're able to mechanically move the wheels back to center rather than having to rely on the wheel slipping back to center as you would with drifting. Now we can actually illustrate this if we move our mechanical back to center strength up to 100%. So you can see at the moment, wherever I leave the wheel, that is just gonna sit there because we don't have any back to center strength. Now, most games actually have their own inbuilt back to center, so you don't need to add this in. But just for the purpose of illustration here, if we were to crank this up to 100 and crank that down to the lowest setting, you'll see if I wind that around, it should rotate back to center quite slowly. If I crank that up to 100%, what we should see is the wheel return to center a lot faster. So let's let go, I'm gonna keep my hands well clear. Yeah, you can see that went much faster. Let's just illustrate that once more, go back down to 10. You can see that actually spent around quite a lot slower. So essentially the purpose of the back to center adjustment here is in the absence of raw telemetry data coming out of the sim, which actually tells the wheel to return back to center. If you're playing a game that doesn't have any force feedback, it's gonna give you that sensation of the steering wheel trying to return to the middle like it does in real life. So then we have mechanical dampening. This has got a pretty big tooltip here. 
So this is basically like a smoothing adjustment. It should hopefully allow us to fine tune out any robotic feeling that we might get in the wheel, but obviously at the expense of making things feel overall more dampened. So it'll be interesting to fiddle around with that and fine tune it a little bit later on. So that is all of our basic settings. Let's now click across to advanced settings. So reversal game force feedback. That's an interesting one. Turn this on when some games require the game force feedback to reversal. So I'm guessing if the uh, if the car's trying to force you to go right when you go left or something like that. I've never experienced that happening, but again, it's good that they have the option there if you do have a problem. Maximum output torque limit. So say for example, you've got young kids that are using the base and you don't want them to be at risk of injuring their hands, which you can do with nine Newton meters. It's not a small amount of force. Then uh, you can crank this down to limit the maximum amount of force feedback that you're ever gonna feel. Now, another scenario where you might wanna use this is say for example, you're wanting to feel more detail in road textures and things like that. But then when you crash, you don't want the wheel to feel overly strong. What you can do is you can crank up your force feedback so you're getting all of that extra detail, all that extra strength in the finer details, but then when you crash, it's not gonna go completely nuts. So if we crank this down, then basically what that's saying is limit the maximum amount of torque that the wheelbase is ever gonna output under, you know, worst case scenario, so crashing for example, but it's not gonna scale down all the other effects as well. It's just putting a hard cap there at the maximum as opposed to say, for example, cranking down the overall force feedback intensity to limit the maximum amount of force feedback you're feeling. That's obviously going to reduce everything, I guess, in proportion to each other, if that makes sense. So back to advanced settings again here, hand off protection. So pretty simple stuff, really. It just means if you do take your hands off the wheel and it begins to oscillate, then uh, it's not gonna go beyond a certain point before it just kind of stops because it realizes that nobody's holding onto the wheel. Base status indicator, enable or disable the blue status light on the front of the base. I'm really glad that they've added that now because that was one of the nitpicks that I had about the, uh, the R16. It's got this little light in the front here, which I can't actually see when I have the GS wheel installed, but some of the other wheels you can see it. So switch that off. And now it's not shining in my face anymore, which is very nice. So that's great that they've added that in. I wasn't sure whether it was actually able to be controlled through firmware, but obviously it is, which is good. So we've then got natural inertia and mechanical friction. Both of those kind of add the sensation of weight into the steering. So with natural inertia, it's a little bit hard to show on camera, but if I switch off hand protection, it might work for me. Let's crank that all the way up. Now, if I turn the wheel and then let go, now it does kind of stop dead in its tracks. But what I'm feeling through the wheel is as I turn it, you kind of get the sense of weight. So it's like kind of, you know, reefing at something, getting it moving. And then as you sort of try to stop your hands, you feel the inertia of the steering behind it kind of trying to force you to keep moving. So a little bit different from friction in that sense. Whereas if I increase the friction, that's basically just adjusting the constant force that I'm feeling. Let's set that back to default again for now. I'm gonna leave that hand protection on too. Speed dependent dampening. So pretty much exactly what it says. Scales the amount of dampening relative to the speed that the vehicle is traveling inside the game. And then we also have an adjustment here for the start point of that dampening as well. So you can adjust that to be whatever speed that you want for your personal preference. So then we have a force feedback equalizer as well. And this is really interesting. So this will be familiar to those of you who might be into audio gear. On the left-hand side here, our Y axis, that is our gain control. And then our X axis is our frequency control. Now we don't have the ability to adjust Q here or the width of each frequency band which we're adjusting, but what we can do is adjust each frequency range in terms of gain. And up the top here, we can see a reference which tells us what that frequency band is responsible for communicating. So operating wheel, body bumps, 80 kilometers riding on curb, and so forth all the way through. So what we can do is fine tune at a relatively granular level, the amount of gain for each of these frequency ranges. And that's gonna allow us to really kind of fine tune those effects to get the exact sort of sensation that we're wanting out of the wheels. So not something that I've personally seen from any other wheelbase brand to date, and definitely something that was useful on the R16 when we tested that, and I'm sure it will be useful here as well.